Huh? The battery pack. This. How about that? No, it ain't going to work. No, I'm not going to take a chance on that. Yes, testing. One, two. Hallelujah. There you go. Right there. We'll have to do something about that. Something's always breaking. Amen. Preached a message three or four years ago. I think it was entitled, It's Always Something. You remember that. It's always something. But we always got something better than that something. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 8 tonight. I want to minister a message entitled, The Operation of God. And I want to point out a few things in the Scripture. Hopefully, the Lord can use uh, me tonight to get His point across uh, that we need to, to have tonight. Romans 8.10 And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. That speaks of the physical body being rendered helpless because of the fall. is what Brother Swagger has in his notes, and that is the way it is. If, because Christ is in us, the, the, the bod- if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life. Everybody say, the Spirit is life. The Spirit is life because of righteousness. Because of righteousness. The Spirit is life to you and me because of righteousness. Now, Jesus said he was the life. He also said he was the truth. But here we see God's Word telling us that the Spirit is life. And in 1 John 5, 6, the Bible tells us the Spirit is truth. With that right there, we see the oneness of our God. Everything that Jesus claimed to be, the Father is and the Spirit of God is because they're one. They're separate persons, but they're one in who they really are. And so we see this in verse 11. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwells in you. That is talking about right now. That's not talking like some people would say, well, that's talking about, no, one day when you're resurrected, your mortal body, he's going to quicken, you're going to have a a new body. That's all true. But if we keep reading, we'll see the word therefore in verse 12, which brings us into something that will reveal it's talking about right now. Brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh, for if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the Spirit... Do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. And he's already told us here, the Spirit is life. So it's through the Spirit we live. It's through the Spirit that we were born again. It was that operation of God that, that, that worked, that work of salvation in us, saved us. And we're going to see that tonight, but I wanted to point out this word quicken in verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. And that word quicken means he will bring you to life. Resurrection life. You have resurrection power available to you. In you. Because it's the spirit that is life. Look at what it it says there in verse 10. If Christ be in you, Christ, doesn't say the Spirit, if Christ be in you. Remember in John 14, Jesus taught that those that love him, the Father's going to send the Spirit. And then he says, right with that teaching there, he tells them, I'm going to come to you. You're not talking about his second coming. Jesus and the Spirit, they're two separate persons of the Godhead, but the whole The fullness of who God is lives in us by His Spirit. You got that. But it's the Bible here says, if Christ be in you. But we know who's living in us, the Spirit of Christ. 
You can't separate them. You cannot separate them. When Jesus walked on the earth, what he did, he did by the will of the Father through the Spirit of God. You can't separate them. The Bible says when Jesus hang on the cross, God was in Christ reconciling sinners to himself. Amen. And we read Monday night in prayer. Where was that at? We were at Monday night. What did I read Monday night in prayer? Was it Hebrews? I can't remember, but it talked about God is the one that raised Christ from the dead. God, it might have been the book of Acts, I can't remember. But God reconciled, God was in Christ reconciling sinners. God was in Christ doing the works that was being done. And now that Christ lives in us by the Spirit of God, we've been quickened. We can, we can live in that 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 state of being quickened every single day. And that this is the work of God, the operation of God. And when God is operating, how many of you heard spirit? You don't hear, you don't hear Baptist, Methodist, you don't hear those kind of people using this phrase, but you hear people like us all the time saying the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit. That is good terminology. Because God moves and God operates. And when God is moving and he's allowed to operate, then there will be fruit of his operation. He's moving on the inside, trying to get us to believe him. And when we do, then he, his operation produces fruit. But we have to let Sister Chastity uh, allow the Lord to speak through her Monday night at prayer and said this, that the promises of God are in Christ, yes and amen. Done deal. The Lord's just trying to get us to learn to let Him minister those promises to us. Lord's not picking and choosing who He's going to do something for because they're more special. He's looking... His eyes go to and fro throughout the whole earth looking whom he may show his strength on the behalf of. That includes whosoever will. Whosoever will come to him, cry to him, be loyal to him, and not turn away from him, and not just with words saying things, but a heart that won't leave God. A heart that won't leave God. Many people have words that sound like they've not left God, but their heart has left God. And we're going to see that in the scriptures tonight. You can be saying all kind of things, but your heart be far from God. Jesus told the crowd that that day. You are drawing near to me with your lips. You sound like you've got it all going on and you're right, but I see your heart and it is far from me. So we got to be careful because you can fake me out. You can fake your spouse out, uh, maybe. <laughs> but you can't fake God out. He knows the state you're in. And he's, you know, he, he knows why you're in that state. He, you know, we're not animals. We can take a step back and say, okay, why are you thinking that? And the more, and, and the more intense our relationship, intimate our relationship is with the Lord, the more we're going to be found doing that. You're going to be on guard more than ever before. That's what some people don't want, this, 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 this war, this constant. this. But let me, it's, it's how you think about it that's going to keep you in the right process. And listen, if you're just thinking about it like, oh, this is too much, I, I can't do this, then you've moved away from faith because you can't without faith. But in faith, you can do all things through Christ. But this is a constant thing. You're never getting away from it. Your spirit is constantly at war with the flesh body you live in. The flesh and the spirit constantly are pushing against each other, trying to slap, just like who was it, uh, Ishmael and Isaac. Constantly, constantly. It's not going to quit. If you're looking for that miracle coming to where the, the battle is over, then you're looking for the rapture, any other thing. It ain't happening, my friend. You're going to fight all the way to the rapture. And if you quit fighting and go find you some church, 
where there's no warfare going on, they fall and pray to the enemy, and that's what some people do. They just get so frustrated instead of uh, continuing to march in the faith and, 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 and continuing to surrender and, and humble themselves before the mighty hand of God and let God continue to bring victory after victory. They just run over here to some church. It's not preaching the message. There's no warfare going on because they're all sitting around defeated. But those who will get in the fight, stay in the fight till the fight is completely over, and that means you're with the Lord. I mean, if you're looking for some miracle to come to get you out of the boxing ring, it ain't happening. You're in it. You might as well just learn to fight. Learn to fight. I didn't plan on saying this tonight, but it needs to be said. You and I are going to have to learn to fight, and it is a nonstop fight. Amen. But it's a good fight because it can't be lost if faith is involved. If we keep allowing God to operate in us, then we're going to keep winning. It is like the Old Testament in a sense. It was one more war. One more war. Oh, they might have had 20 years of peace, but all of a sudden the Philistines, there, they're rising up again. Oh, and we get them, and it's another 10 years, but there's the Jebusites all, all of a sudden. Then, then there's the, 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 the Garishites, the, the backbites. There's, everybody's going to rise up against you, and it's not going to stop till you see Jesus, so learn to fight. You're going to learn to fight, or you're going to crawl off and get in a hole in some little old church where they do meet for 20 minutes. Amen. Amen. So he quickens our mortal bodies by his spirit. That's resurrection life. And verse 12 tells us, I read it, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. That brings us into a right now. We're not called to live after the flesh. And we don't have to if we'll just hang on to what he did to quicken us. That quickening power is still in us. Amen. Let's look at Colossians chapter 2, verse 11 through 13. We're going to see some things tonight. Colossians chapter 2, verse 11. Says this, Colossians 2, 11, In whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, that's talking about the hands of man, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. Through the faith of of the operation of God. See, there is a faith that causes God to operate. There is a faith that causes the Holy Spirit to move and operate in your life. The moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit. People hear us say that, they go, oh, they must be Pentecostal. You're right, we are. The Holy Spirit moves and operates in our lives. We've learned the truth of the cross, the sanctifying truth of the cross, that now we have learned what moves God. And it's faith in His Son, Jesus, and what He did at Calvary. It's not me declaring something. It's not me going and doing something. It's still me just believing in Him. Just believing in Christ. But here's the reality of it, and we've been saying it through the last year and a half in different ways, but here's the reality of it in what we're talking about tonight. If, we're, if our faith is right, God is operating in our lives, and if He's operating, the fruit of His operation is there. The fruit of His operation, the fruit of His Spirit having His way. There's no fruit of the Spirit unless the Spirit is having His way. I need to say that again. There is no fruit of the Holy Spirit unless the Holy Spirit is allowed to have His way. If He's being grieved, He cannot bear fruit. He cannot produce fruit in us. Amen. So buried with Him in baptism, what got you buried with Him in baptism? Dying with him. Romans 6 teaches us that. 
buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him. See, I like that's encouraging right there. You ought to have a smile on your front of your face so big it's pulling on your earlobes. I'm telling you, you were with Christ when he came out of the grave. When he came out of the grave, you came out with him. If you were in Adam when he sinned, and now you've been born again through the one that died for you, and God says you're in him, you were placed in him by being baptized into his death. Romans 6, 3 tells you that. So that means that's where you entered Christ on the cross. So when he was buried, you were immersed into that baptism of death, that grave with him. And when he came out of the grave, the Bible says you were risen with him. The church don't have really that much of a problem, I don't think, understanding how we got in our sinful state through Adam, but we hadn't really awakened to the truth that we're in Christ now as much as we were in Adam before. We're in Christ. We're in his lineage. We're in the kingdom. We are children of God. We were not before. And it's because of the faith of the operation of God who has raised him from the dead. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. Who did it? It wasn't you operating. It wasn't you riding a bicycle around town with a white shirt on, knocking on so many doors to be able to get to heaven. It was the operation of God. The operation of God. It was through the faith of the operation of God who has raised him from the dead. Verse 13, and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. When were you quickened and given life? When he forgave you of your sins. You understand that? When Jesus appeared and was dying on the cross, he died. On the cross. we That old man that he came to take out of the way. The old Curtis had to be put down. He wasn't no good. Listen, God says he wasn't no good for nothing. Could never be any good for anything. All he could do is die. And God would raise up a new man in Christ. One that had nothing to do with the old man. A new creation in Christ. Has nothing to do with the old man. Church thinks that some of folks are being rehabilitated. Nobody's being rehabilitated. You're either dying and being born again or you're going to hell, my friend. You can't get better. God says on your best day, all y'all put together on your best day, it's all a bunch of filthy rags to me. The only thing that's clean is what's made clean by the blood of my son Jesus. Nothing else is clean. It's all wicked. It's all full of evil doesn't matter what kind of appearance it's got if it ain't through the blood it's wicked I mean wicked as the day is long it can have a good it can have a look of right it can have a a look of uh, of what really the boss what the Bible says isn't it there's a way that seems right to man but that way ends in death man they can be doing all these good deeds but if they're not in Christ they're lost And they're not going to make it. He says here, And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, has he quickened together with him when? Having forgiven you all trespasses. You see, your life is based on the death. He died for you because of your sins. Not you coming to church trying to become a better person, hanging around church people. If you don't come to God through faith in the death of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, you will not live. It ain't about getting in a church. It ain't about teaching Sunday school. A lot of people get in trouble out there in the world. They run to church and try to become a a part of the church. Listen, if you don't come to God through faith in the blood of Jesus that was shed for your sins, you're still lost. Lost. Blind. Undone. Without hope. But the good news is you don't have to stay that way. Anybody can be saved at any time. If they will come to God through faith in the blood shed for the forgiveness of their sins. Hallelujah. 
we often speak of the moving and operation of the Holy Spirit. Let us look closer. Let's look to Psalms 28, verse 2 tonight. I want to show you a couple of scriptures in the Old Testament concerning the operation of God's hands. And I hope we've pointed out in the New Testament how the operation of God, the operation of the Lord is, is through what happened at Calvary. God don't operate through nothing else. He don't work through anything else. Psalms 33, 4, Romans 8, 2. God, you can't put him in a box, but he has limited himself to a law right now that he only deals with man based on, and that is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That's the only law that he gives to man that man might be saved by. Romans 8, 2. It's the only law in which the Holy Spirit will work in your life, that he will operate in your life. You know, I... I know there's got to be a lot of people that hate Brother Swaggart and hate people like us, a lot, especially a lot of the big-name ministers because they're losing people. They're just kind of trinkling out. I promise you, even though there are many departing from the faith and they have over the last several years, there are people who are trinkling out of, those, of that heresy, and they are coming back to their first love. They are, you know how I know? Because we did. We're not the only ones. God is reaching and he's grabbing people out of the fire. I'm telling you, those denominations, those false ministries out there, they're taking a hit in the name of Jesus. And their falsehoods being revealed. Facebook's one of the best things that ever happened, I'm telling you. I mean, you, you ain't getting away with nothing. If you wear the wrong colored socks, they're going to tell it on you. And these false ministers out there, they're just being blasted, man, to the whole world through things like Facebook and all kind of media, just showing, putting out their clips of them, lying to the people. It's out there. But here, here let me say this tonight, because here's the danger. The devil, and I've already seen it, the devil, it's already happening. The devil is smart. How I many you know the devil's pretty smart? Although he's a dumb person, he's an idiot. You get kicked out of heaven, you're an idiot. But he's smart enough to know this. He sees all the warning coming against what's wrong, so he starts having everybody warn. You're going to see everybody warning. Everybody's going to be warning. But the only ones who are going to have the power of Christ resting on them are not those who talk a certain way, not those who have a certain amount of money coming into their ministries, those who have their faith in the blood exclusively. That's how you know. That's how you know. You don't, I mean, if they rush in here tonight and say, well, don't look like you got much power, well, so it didn't look like Jesus had much either. But he held all power in his hands. And as a lamb, he went to the cross to die. It's not about us standing up in the natural with swords and guns and tanks. and It's about us by the Spirit of God just trusting the Lord to do what needs to be done. And if we get stoned and it looks like to them that we were nothing, I tell you what, it ain't looking that way to the folk in heaven. Things never are on this earth the way they really appear to be. And the cross is the best example of that. Look like Jesus. If you are the Son of God, then get yourself down off there. Yeah, because he was the Son of God, he didn't come down off there. See, it's backwards. The world gets it backwards. If you're the Son of God, then come down off there. Because he was the Son of God, he did not come down off there. Because he loved you and me, he did not come down off there. Because he loved you and me, he did not call legions of angels. But he just kept his mouth shut and died for me and you. And it appeared to be something that it was not, but it really was his victory. And it's in that victory we stand tonight. See, that was God's declaration. That was God's operation. And the proof that he had operated in his son on Calvary was that his son came out of the grave on the third day to prove God was in Christ reconciling sinners to himself. God was speaking that day. I believe when the earth thundered and earthquake came, that was the voice of God thundering. 
I believe that because Hebrews 12, 24 says that he speaks to us that the blood of Jesus speaks better things than that of Abel. That mountain God thundered in the Old Testament, and I believe God thundered on that day of the cross too. It got dark and God thundered because his son was about to die. He only speaks through his son. He only operates through his son. That means through the blood. Psalm 28, verse 2, Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto you. When I lift up my hands toward thy holy oracle, draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. You know any people like that? Mm. Give them according give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endeavors give them after the work of their hands render to them their desert but here here comes why because they regard not the works of the lord nor the operation of his hands he shall destroy them and not build them up the lord will not build them up who speak Peace to their neighbors. Hallelujah, thank you. God bless you. But mischief is in their hearts. You get that? And he says, he shall destroy them and not build them up. It's the con it's it's he says this and it's contrary to what Jesus says in the New Testament about those who believe in him. He says, I will build my church. The operation of God. Who do men say that I am? Oh, John the Baptist, Elijah, you know they have to send everything. Lord, who do you say that I am? Oh, you're the, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Oh, and flesh and blood didn't tell you that, Peter. But my heavenly Father told you that. See, God moved on the heart of Peter, showed Peter who Jesus was. And when, he, when Jesus heard that, that, that Peter had that revelation, he said, on this rock, I'll build my church. That revelation, that operation of God, God showing Peter, this was the Christ. You can hear him. You can follow him. You can stay with him. He is my son. Peter heard that voice on the Mount of Transfiguration. This is my son. Hear him. And although Peter would deny Christ at a later time before he was born again, Jesus didn't give up on him. Jesus came back after him after he was resurrected. Told Peter, feed my sheep. He didn't give up on him. It's the opposite of what we're seeing here in the Old Covenant. But you better pay attention to what you see in the Old Covenant. You better not let these Joseph Princes and Paul Whites and all these hyper-grace revolution uh, nuts running around that don't understand the Bible tell you that the Old Testament hadn't got anything to do with us. Old Testament. No, that was them. Oh, you, you, now you've been given a, a, a new spirit. You, you've been given a new heart. And that's all true, Ezekiel 36, 26, and 27. And God even put his spirit in you, and they didn't have that. But Romans 11 says, take heed when you think you stand. Remember, you stand by faith. Don't get heady and high-minded, because if you do, God will cut you off too. So you've got to bring all this to a balance. And the New Testament says, look back at the Old Testament and learn from it learn what learn how God dealt with his people when they allowed his hands to move in their life but when they wouldn't regard his hands it says there in verse 5 when they regard not the work of the Lord nor the operations of his hands and you know what tied his hands when they would move away from that sacrifice and, and begin to worship false gods in these other nations and you got to ask yourself, 
How in the world could they do that after God, with a mighty hand, brought them out of Egypt? But you, you ain't got to ask too long. You'll figure out by looking at your own self. You've been given a better covenant based on better promises, and we still do dumb stuff too. Amen. It's all based on faith. Faith. And you all have access to that. They did, you do, you have better now. They didn't have the Spirit of God living in them. They, they weren't new creations in Christ. They didn't have a new spirit and a new heart, and God didn't put His Spirit in them. But God led them, God told them the way to, that they could follow Him and be blessed, and, and He let it be up to them. I'm telling you, if you do this, you'll be blessed. If you don't, if you, if you don't listen to me, you'll be cursed. Amen. Was it really any different today? Except you've been given strength and power. You've been, you've been made a new creation, but you still have a choice. You're not a robot. You still have to choose. God didn't put robots on the earth. He put men and women to be able to choose. That's why the tree of life, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was there because God's not looking for people he can slap around and make worship him. He puts us here created in his image with a free will. And we can or we don't have to worship God. Amen. So he tells them he's not going to build them up because they wouldn't regard the works of the Lord nor the operation of his hands. And then in Isaiah brings a real scary picture, Isaiah 5, verse 11. A real scary picture. And as we read through this, don't overlook that God here through the prophet Isaiah is speaking to his people, not the world. Isaiah 5.11, Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that continue until night till wine inflames them, and the harp and the vial, the tabret, the pipe, the wine, and wine are in their feast, but they regard not the work of the Lord, neither consider the operation of his hands. That sounds like the folks today who claim to be Christians who think it's okay to go to the clubs and drink. And just Here it is. Here they are right here in the Old Testament. He's talking about the world here. And look, he'll tell you here in just a minute in verse 13. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Doesn't mean they didn't have it, access to it. it. They didn't have it because they were rejecting it. They wouldn't accept it. Look at what he says. Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore, hell has enlarged herself. You're going to learn something tonight. We quote this scripture all the time, but you see in tonight in the context it was written. Who's, oh my goodness. Therefore, hell has enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. Without measure. That means hell is constantly being enlarged. It, it's without measure. And their glory and their multitude and their pomp and he that rejoices in that mess shall descend into it. Who? My people. It's in the Bible. Now you've got you've to resist the Holy Spirit. And you are if you try to turn this around to make it mean, no, that's not God's people. Yes, it is God's people. He did not prophesy to the world. He prophesied to his people. The word of God today is for the people of God. He did not prophesy to the world. He says right here, therefore my people are gone into captivity. He's talking about his people that done, they've done moved away from him. You don't think the church is in trouble? today oh they'll tell you there's nothing wrong with drinking there's nothing wrong with going and doing all this stuff they'll go to man they'll miss church to go do anything they don't even know it but they're looking for anything that'll keep them out of the congregation and God says listen you're supposed to be more faithful to the house I plant you in the older you get book of Hebrews therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. 
Why do they have no knowledge? Because they've turned away from him and they've turned to the world for, for its music, its alcohol, its, its nightlife, its, its all this stuff. They've turned away from the truth. They've traded in the truth for a lie. They've traded in the glory that Jesus gave them as his people. Jesus says in John 17, I have given them your glory. We've traded in the glory of God again for the glory of the world. Traded in the glory of God for the glory that's in the world. It's sad. But there are some that are going to cling to the old rugged cross. They're not going to be anybody in this life because this ain't the time and the place to be anybody. This is not our world. The music's not, that ain't our music out there. That's not, listen, we live in a good country. Thank God for that. It's, the, it, it, it's better than most. It ain't that good. But it is good. But it ain't good. But it is good. I go to bed and sleep all night. I eat good. I got AC and heat. We're blessed. Don't get me wrong, but this nation is collapsing only because the church has collapsed. Don't forget it. Quit blaming Obama and Hillary. It is not their fault. They're lost. Lost people do what lost people do. This word ain't for lost people. It's for saved people so there can be more saved people. You start preaching like this. I know people tune in all the time and see now, especially on Facebook, and they're like, oh, my Lord, what's wrong with him? What's he mad about? That's what they said about the prophets. And nobody's mad except at the devil. You can't be mad at blind man for being blind. You can just keep hollering at him, over here, over here, this way. His name is Jesus. Through the cross, you can have him. Through the cross and Christ, you can get to heaven. Through the cross and Christ, you can have a victorious life where sin won't dominate you. Through Christ and the cross, your marriage can be what it should be. You can live without grief. You can live without torment. But only through Christ and the cross. That's it. Christ and the cross, not Christ and anything else. So I hope we've got this tonight. You know, I know what people say. Y'all mixing law with grace, man. Y'all just preaching like you do to make people scared and think they got to keep coming back to church. No, you can say what you want. It's always been this way. There's always been people that would declare the word and the people have to look at it and say, well, you know what, it does say that. And then they'll hang with it. They'll let that conviction that comes move them closer to the Lord. Or they'll, or, they'll let, or they'll call it something other than conviction. They'll, they'll, they'll turn it in for something else. Well, you ain't, we ain't got to be that serious. You know, that guy that pulled up out here a few weeks ago before church on Sunday morning said, I've heard you preach. Do you really have to be that intense? I said, is hell real? Did God have to give his son to die on the cross? Well, you got a point there. I said, yeah, I got a good one. One more time. Verse 12, Isaiah 5. Running out of time. And the harp and the vial, the tabret and the pipe, and wine are in their feasts. I believe, I believe that this is God's people in the feasts of the Lord. But they've turned it into something other than what they were created for. Oh, the music was there. I believe most today in church need to add, take that step back as a human being that you can and say, why am I going to church? Why, why am I? And I promise you, the Lord will show you why you've been going. That might need to change. Like that boy in high school when the teacher asked him, I'll never forget that. One of them Bartlett boys up in DKL, the teacher asked him, why'd you boys come to church today? Why did y'all come to Sunday school? 
That big old boy said, because my mama almost broke my arm getting me out in the car. In other words, you know, a lot of people go to church because their wife would be awful mad if they didn't. Husband be mad if you didn't. Kind of quiet in here tonight. You need to ask yourself, why do you come? Is it because you love the Lord? You're about the things of the Lord? And the harp and the vial and the tabret and the pipe and wine are in their feasts, but they're not regarding the work of the Lord, neither considering the operation of his hands. What he's trying to do in their feast is get their mind and heart on him and what he wants to do in them and through them. How many people do you think go to church every Sunday to get a word from God so God can change their life and begin to use them greater? Very, very few. Staggering. It would stagger you if you knew literally how many people came to church to literally worship God and come to hear God. i want, I got to hear from you today. Listen, I live by every word that comes out of your mouth. I'm in the word, and I want to hear what you're going to say today at church. And I come looking for you to speak to me so I can get a blessing. I pray that that would be everybody that goes to this house. When we come to church, when we gather in the name of Jesus, I believe that's part of what that means. We're gathering in the name of Jesus to hear from Jesus. And through faith in the cross and the preached word, we will get a word from God that will change our lives. And God's going to do great things. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished. The honorable men. Who's the honorable men? The ones who are esteemed. The honorable men are famished. That means they've been desensitized and moved away. Even them, the honorable men, have moved away. Somebody sent me a video last week. A woman that lives, uh, I don't know, I think, Kentucky. Lord, I can't keep up with all my friends, and she's a faithful listener, and uh, she's just a precious saint. But she sent me this video in uh, uh, West Virginia, I think, is where she's from, this video of this church that had all their kids dressed up as devils and geeks and gooks on, on the Halloween thing on the platform. And, and, and what really got me was how the man pastoring the church was like at least 75, 80 years old. And I know the Lord, when I was watching that about 11, 12-minute video, the Lord showed me how even the older generation that so many years ago, like when I was a kid, man, I used to hear some preaching of the gospel that'd make me scratch the varnish off the pew. I'm not kidding you. And these men, these honorable men who've known the truth, but they've turned away and brought all the worldly things into the church, they've been desensitized. You know what that means? To be desensitized, if you've got a pot of boiling hot water and you throw, a, throw on the stove and you throw a frog in it, he's going to get out. But if you put a frog in that hot water, in that like just cool water, and just turn it up little bit by little bit, he'll just sit there till he dies in it. It just little bit by little bit. How many of you ever got the water too hot in the bathtub before you realized it? You're so weak you couldn't hardly get out. I'm the only dummy, I see. <laughs> Desensitized. You're, you're in it. You're, you're just you're going along with it. You, 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 you're not aware, really, of what's going on. Let me tell you something. They know it's not right. Because they hear people on the streets or they, or they flipping through the channels and they hear a brother swaggered or a brother whoever and they hear somebody preaching the cross and that has to quicken them if they belong to the Lord. Truly, if they're saved, that has to quicken them, quicken them because, because they're born again and they hear that message that God is attempting with all that he has to operate in them again. There, there is a reach from God that you have to feel if you're born again. You have to feel it. Now, you may be so religious that you reject it still, but you got to feel it. you got to do something with it. I'm telling you, these people in the Old Testament, they knew they were leaving God. Oh, but, but they thought they could just include Him in their stuff. Their stuff. See, it ain't about our stuff. 
I heard a woman on the radio station the other day. That Caleb plays some good music, but boy, them people need to get filled with the Holy Ghost and come back to the cross. They play some good songs every once in a while, but them people need to get filled with the Holy Ghost and come back to the cross. Because they sure ain't there and they sure ain't got it. I hear them saying some of the fleshed out things, man. Y'all made me forget what I was going to say, but that's all right. I said enough about it. He says, the honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. The multitude. And because it's a multitude, hell has enlarged herself. How many know the Bible teaches that hell wasn't made for men? The book of Matthew. Hell was not made for men. Is it Matthew 25? Is that right? Bible scholars, where are you? I think it's Matthew 25, but it, the Bible says in the book of Matthew, hell wasn't made for men, it was made for Satan and all the, yeah. But because men reject the way of life, they go to the place of their choosing. Therefore, hell has enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory and their multitude and their pomp. I need to look that word up. I believe it just means all your stuff. Everything that you thought you were about, all your pomp. And he that rejoices shall descend into it. One last scripture, Ephesians 3, 6 through 7. You know it well. Ephesians 3, 6, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Wherefore, I was made a minister, Paul writes, according to the gift of grace of God, the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Now, get ready for this. That word effectual working of his power, that phrase means the same. It's the same Greek word as operation. You look it up when you get home. I already have, but you go ahead and do it too. That word operation in Colossians 2 and 11, 2 12, wherever it's at, 2 12, through the faith of the operation of God, it's the same Greek word for effectual working of his power. And the way the Lord's given it to us, even more so here at Crossway Church, is this. God's grace is God at work. God's grace is the operation of God. When we were saved by grace, we were saved by the operation of God. Wherefore, I was made a minister, Paul says, according to the gift of the grace of God that was given unto me by the effectual working of his power. That means God at work, God doing something, God being able to effectually work that in your life that you so desperately need, which is his saving grace, his mercy, his, his presence, his, the benefits of Calvary each and every day. Amen. The operation of God was the cross of Christ. And only through our faith in that will we experience today the operation of God. You need to never forget that. The operation of God was God working in Christ on the cross, reconciling sinners to himself. And if God is going to work in your life and my life, it's going to be through our faith in the operation of God. You see, what God did on the cross in his son Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago is all he's going to work in your life based on. People say, what's the cross 2,000 years ago? 2,000 years ago got to do with us today. Here's the answer. It's all God has ever worked in. God has destroyed entire nations because they would not accept the blood sacrifice that he offered through the promise of the Son the seed of the woman coming one day, the Redeemer. They wouldn't have it. Oh, other nations begin to sacrifice because you just can't get away from God, what's, what God started, but then you start doing it in the name of whoever you call God. Other nations sacrifice. 
but they didn't have the promise of the seed of the woman through their sacrifice. And they didn't have the place God designated where he dwelt for their sacrifice. So that's why 2,000 years ago, and really it's 4,000 years before that, when God laid the foundation in the blood of his son Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, in the blood. And then everything God's done, he's, he's destroyed nations because of their rejection of that, and he's blessed the people through the ages that would keep their faith in that. And it may not look like God was blessing them, just like it didn't look like God was blessing Jesus when he was on the cross, but I got news for you. That's through that which he did is where all the blessings flow through. Outside of that, doesn't matter the way it looks. Doesn't matter the way it feels. Doesn't matter the way it seems. It's either the cross or we're without God. We're, we're, we're our faith. This is why it's so important to preach this message, to believe this message, to meditate in the Scriptures and let the Holy Spirit reveal to you this truth so, so much because God cannot operate in your life outside of this. You might want Him to. You might be desperate for Him to. But until you come to the cross... Humble for the forgiveness of your sins and for the strength you need daily to live and all the peace, the joy, the gentleness, the goodness that you know you need to be experiencing and that you know Jesus died to give you until you come back to the cross, you're just going to be doing the best you can do. And if you're honest, you're going to have to admit it's not working out for you. You're still worried. You still gripe. You still complain about everything. Your, your mouth is still foul. And let me tell you why your mouth is foul, because your heart is foul. Something the Lord told me this week is why people who hear in the message of the cross don't go to these churches preaching the cross. Simple, their faith is not in the cross. Don't forget that. I'm not talking about people who are in these towns and cities that don't have a church to go to. I'm talking to people who have access locally to a local church. Some watching by Facebook tonight. You could be here. And the reason that you're not in church is in, in this cross-preaching church or a cross-preaching church is because your faith is really not in the cross. You might say, how do you know? Because if it was, you'd want to be listening to the message of the cross in the congregation that God has commanded you to be in. You might say, well, my husband won't go. What's that got to do with you? My wife won't go. What's that got to do with you? Jesus said, if you let any of them get in between you and him, you're not a disciple. And I know the Lord is speaking to some of you watching tonight. The Lord is speaking to you some, some of you who are watching Right now, even though it's not tonight anymore, it's later. He's reaching for you. You know where you're supposed to be. You know that you need to be hearing this message constantly over and over. You know that the preaching of the cross is the power of God. But you're still just kind of wavering and pushing. and Something else is more important than God's operation in your life. You need to wake up. You need to wake up. Yeah, I see he's dealing with you. You need to wake up. It's not about me. It's not about Crossway Church. It's about your faith being properly placed in the blood of the Lamb. And when it is, God's going to begin to operate in your life. And some of the things that you've wanted deliverance from, you're going to experience that. Some of the people that's even held you down in bondage through fear, you're going to be delivered from that. Some of the things that you've been longing for, that you know it's God's will to be there, you're going to begin to experience that. Not because you give money, not because you go do something, but simply because really and truly with your heart you surrender to the truth. The truth. And God begins to operate in your life. Not because you're telling people He is, but because you realize and you're experiencing His operation in you. And there's fruit and other people see it. One last thing. You are your brother's keeper. You are your brother's keeper. You're either harming or edifying the body. You're harming 
are edifying the body. When you obey God's word, you're edifying the body. When you disobey God's word, you're harming the body. You see, it's not just about us. When I was growing up, I'd tell my mama, what? I ain't hurting nobody else. It's me doing it. But the truth is, when we are away from the Lord, we are drawing others away from the Lord. Amen, Brother Curtis. When we know to do right and we do it not, it is sin. And the Holy Spirit is grieved until we submit to Him and obey. I know the message of the cross is the power of God. But just starting to say that phrase ain't going to do anything for you. You got to believe in it with your heart. You got to believe what took place there that Jesus died for you and that old man was crucified and you're a new creation in him. And now we're learning to live as that new creation and we're also learning to hate that old man more and more. Did you hear that? You're learning to hate that old man more and more. Hallelujah. Stand with me tonight. Lord, we thank you tonight for your word, for your Holy Spirit.